Good morning, everybody. It's Tom Christie back in the workshop, and this will be session five of Carving a Drake Golden Eye Decoy. In the last session, we got the body uh, details put in place, but in today's session, we'll finish that detailing. I've got some work to do on the side pockets to bump out some feather groups. I want to get the scapulars a little more defined, put some splits in some of the carving we've already done. And then if we have time, we'll get the head mounted as well. Hey, I wanted to thank all of you that have subscribed to the channel. If you haven't done that, please do. If you value the content that I'm putting together, that helps me out. And uh, I can continue to grow this thing. And uh, I really appreciate the encouragement and feedback and suggestions I've gotten for things that people would like to see. So keep those coming. I appreciate it, and let's get going on session five. All right, I'm going to start with that blue quarter-inch cylindrical burr, and I've done some layout work of the scapular feathers on the back, and I'm going to just use that burr to outline the feathers and feather groups I'm not going to try to carve every individual feather in this kind of decorative smoothie, but I will hit quite a few feathers and begin to develop those. So I'm going to outline these first, and I'll kind of jump through some of this that's just repetitive, so you don't have to watch the same thing happen over and over again but I want to show you enough that you get the gist of how to carve a bird like this if you want to do it yourself, at least in the way that I do it. Okay, I'm going to speed the video up and you can see I'm not hitting every feather group, uh, but the majority of the feather groups. So I'll continue to do this outlining and then we'll come back and begin developing the shape of the feather. Now I'm gonna to switch to this cone-shaped burr and use that to remove material around those uh, trenches that I've carved with the other burr and begin to develop shapes in these feathers and feather groups. The cone shape just allows me to get in and do some shaping right down uh, to the root of the feather. I'll use this also uh, once I remove material and create kind of steps between feathers I'll use it also to round uh, individual feathers and feather groups. So I'll speed the video up here and watch just a little bit more of this process. It's very repetitive, so there's no use in watching hours of, of doing this. Just using this burr to rough shape the feathers and get groups defined. And then we'll come back in and refine those next. Next, I'm gonna to move to the bullet-shaped ruby bit and use that to further define feathers and groups, round things and remove burr marks and just refine things in general and tighten, tighten it up. The burr carving is great for speed, and then uh, and and that's why I use them. They take off a lot of wood fast, and then move to the ruby bit to really do the refinement of the rough carving that's been done. And once you do this with the ruby bit, there's not a ton of sanding that has to be done. This is probably a medium grit uh, ruby. So not real fine, so it's still uh, removing material, but 
fine enough to give you a fairly good surface when you're done shaping. I'll speed this up again. This is pretty fast work. Uh, this is double speed, obviously, but um, it doesn't take too long to go through the feathers this way. And now I'm going to move up to the cape, and you can see the sketches I've put on for feathers on the cape, and I'm going to use the side of that same ruby bit to define those feather edges on the cape. And I don't want a lot here because the cape is relatively smooth, but want some indication of layered feathers. There you get a look at at least the beginning of that. Now I'm going to sand overall. And this is kind of an iterative process. Grind a little, sand a little, and re-pencil and keep, keep addressing the areas that need to be more accurate and clean. But you can see the shadows that are starting to form there. That's what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to go back to the cylindrical burr and I've done some layout work on the side pockets and this is primarily feather groups as opposed to individual feathers on the side pockets but I want to give a little bit of shadow and shape to the side pocket feathers and so this is very similar to the process we just watched on the back. So I'll speed through this. On the side pocket, I like to look for areas where I can undercut a feather group or two in a few places, and that allows light from the top to cast a shadow below the feather group, which uh, just projects well from a distance. Just a lot of rough work to remove material and uh, get it shaped up. And then we'll follow up with the, the cone-shaped or bullet-shaped burr and then the bullet-shaped ruby, same as we did on the back. So I'll skip through this a little bit. Now I've switched to the bullet-shaped ruby bit and I'm just rounding things off. Same process we used on the back. I'd like to create some undercut areas where you cast a little bit of a shadow with a side pocket feather group. Now I'm just going to use the sanding drum. This is 150 grit and go over the entire side pocket area and blend things together and not lose all the definition but create more softness. So it's you're kind of sanding, but also doing some more sculpting with this sanding drum. I just wanted to show enough of this that you get the idea that I'm just using this to create blended areas and softness. Once I've drum sanded, then I use uh, kind of a rubber back piece of Swiss sandpaper. This is probably 150 grit and just do some hand sanding to really get down into the areas that the drum uh, has trouble reaching. Let's take a quick look at this. I've got this sanded and uh, I've penciled in some feather groups and some splits that I want to pay attention to and install. So now I'm going to use the uh, grinder and just put in a few splits. We're going to paint in, or I will paint in splits as well, but uh, some carved in splits will really add to the, the look and complement the paint. 
I'm going to use this little cylindrical ruby bit to carve in some splits. And this is probably an eighth of an inch in diameter or so. And the edge of it is rounded just slightly. So it gives a little bit of a softer look to the split than a real hard edge cylinder. And this is a very repetitive process. Um, so I'll kind of skip through this as we go, but starting at the tail of the bird and moving forward. Try to get this up in the light so you can see those splits. And now I'm moving to the tertials and I'll move up to the scapulars and eventually the cape feathers as well. And then also the side pockets. You want these splits to flow the way the barbs on a feather flow towards the quill. And as you pull back, you pull up so that the split becomes narrow uh, as it goes further back into the feather. Now I'm going to move up to the cape area and just do a few splits in each of those cape feathers. Just knock off the burrs. There we go. I am going to use a smaller cylinder for these tail feathers just to maintain sharpness and put a few splits in the tail feathers. Just put these in randomly spaced so there's nothing regular about them and they look natural. And then just using a little Scotch-Brite material to knock the, the burrs off and soften things. All right, I've finished with the splits. Now I'm just doing some light sanding over the entire bird. And I did leave this area smooth because I want to paint in there's a lot of intricate feather work going on here and I didn't want to try to carve all of that in a smoothie so I'm going to paint those very characteristic bars in instead of carving them in all right I'm going to attach the head with five minute devcon epoxy not very exciting, I know, but it's exciting for me because it means I'm getting close to seeing the bird finished, which is always a big part of the fun. So I just wet both surfaces. Make sure there's good contact by rocking it back and forth. And then I'll just hold that in place once I get it positioned where I want it. It needs to be a little far, farther forward. And then I'll hold that in place until the epoxy cures. Now I'm going to use that cone-shaped burr. And after the epoxy has set, I'm going to go in and remove the epoxy. And I use a burr here because... Uh, a ruby bit would really load up fast with the, the epoxy. So I'm going to take off the epoxy and at the same time create a little groove right at the seam so that I have a place for the uh, plastic wood to bond when we get to that step. I'm also using the burr to sculpt the uh, body and the neck so that they match up. And then we use a little sandpaper to finish things before we uh, do the plastic wood at the 
neck joint. Last step for today, use the acetone on the neck joint. And cut a little groove right at the glue or epoxy joint there so that we have some room for the plastic wood to bond. Get that cleaned up and any loose materials removed. And then you've seen me do this before. I'm just going to take the plastic wood and push it into the neck joint. You may have a better tool than this. A popsicle stick works well. Once you get some in, then you can start using acetone and an old brush to smooth it out. And I always try to minimize the amount of plastic wood as much as possible. So I'll, get, I'll go ahead and finish this neck joint. Okay, we made good progress today in session five. We got the body detailed, so it's finished. The head is mounted. The neck joint is taken care of. We'll have some light sanding next time. We'll seal the bird, finish the bottom, brand it, get it ready for painting. So until then, this is Tom Christie signing off. Good carving to all of you.